Hi there. Good evening. My name is Lana and I am here in Clearwater, Florida. And I'm here to share with you a beautiful meditation. I am a Kundalini yoga teacher and I truly believe in these teachings. These teachings have changed my life. They've really brought me deeper within myself and allowed me to become more mindful of what it is my patterns and my past has created in my life and how my life has truly been a response to where my mind, body, and soul have been. And so, you know, it's, it's been key for me that I sit with the most uncomfortable situations and recognize that everything that's happening to me is really a reflection of what's going on within me that life is showing up to me and that it's not happening to me. I, I lived the victim life for many, many years and it was, it was draining, it was exhausting because everything was being coming at me, attacking me. I lost my job in Naples, Italy because I thought, it, because I thought people were trying to attack me so I was trying to hide and keep myself aware and then it really turned into that I was drawing in the same attacks that I was trying to keep a low profile and, and defend. And that was pretty powerful for me to become aware of in my life. So just little things like that, or like relationships and friends and family and, ex and interactions that I've had over the years have really been where I've learned and grown the most. That when you do the meditation, you, you you have to eventually have to put it into practice. You can have all the, Amer the, the amazing knowledge and wisdom, but it's when it's the one-on-one -on -one with another that you will, you will grow the most. You apply. It's the integration into your own life. And so, for example, Kundalini Yoga is taught by Yogi Bhajan is truly the yoga of awareness through your personal experience. I can't tell you what you're going to experience. I can't tell you what's going to happen or anything. I can't help you. I can't fix you. You have to make choices for yourself. And it's very humbling when you really, really, truly care for someone and you want to help them. You want, you don't want them to suffer. And so we, we believe we have the, the purest of intentions that they find the love within themselves, the awareness within themselves, that you don't want them to also experience some of the pains you've experienced. So we try to protect people and we think in the form of, well, I want to help or, or fix something in their life because we don't want them to suffer, right? So imposing ourselves on another person, it's actually a subtle form of control, thinking we know better for someone when we don't normally know what's best for us. And, you know, communication it starts within. When you become mindful and aware of your own thoughts, it makes it easier to communicate. When you step into your personal power, when you speak from your navel center and express it through your heart as best you can and hold space for others. But before you can do that, you have to work on you. You have to go within yourself. And right now, I, I, I've been feeling very emotional. I. I spoke about this earlier today on my video about how I was neglecting myself and so I was feeling a little neglected in, in ways that I felt I needed to receive a love. You know, this is the thing. We don't always know each other's love languages. We don't always know what it is someone else needs to feel safe, to feel secure, to feel respected, appreciated, valued. And this is what we're all learning. Because even sometimes we neglect ourselves, we don't even know what it is we need. And therefore we expect someone else to make up for that or for them to extend it and make, them, make us feel comfortable. And so it's, it's this interchange, this divine dance with one another where we express ourselves and we learn more. We learn more about ourselves because everything starts within. And the going within is the toughest part. And to say that, you know, everything outside of us is happening to us is really just, it's, it's brushing it off. It's not going within. It's, 
it's negating the fact that there's stuff out in the inside that is coming up on the outside. And I know for myself, when I, when I sit with a lot of my heavy thoughts, when I sit in my meditation, it's not always going to be easy. I, I, it's not gonna, I'm not going to tell anybody or candy coat it and tell you, it's all bliss. Because that's not the real life. And we came here into this human form to have experiences, to feel the richness of all that is around us. And the only way we can do that, to feel fully, is to also feel the crap, to also sit with the shit. Yes, I said that. If you don't sit with it, if you're not willing to go in with it, you're gonna grow slower. You're gonna stunt your own evolution, right? And so the real work comes with doing the work, with showing up for yourself, with confronting the crap that goes on up in here and recognizing when it's not coming from here. Because again, the mind wants to be happy and the heart just, or the mind wants to be right. See, I'm already in the heart. The heart wants to be happy. The mind wants to be right. And when your mind is so fixated on wanting to be right, it will tumble other people down. It will shoot people down. It will, it doesn't take prisoners. It doesn't worry about the cleanup that has to happen as a result. It doesn't consider the pain and the, and the feelings hurt of other people. And then on top of it, for many of us who are already hypercritical of ourselves, we beat ourselves up for the words we don't think before we speak. We beat ourselves up when we recognize, oh my gosh, I wasn't in here. I was up in here. The, the will, the, the ego, whatever you want to call it, you have a hard head. That's just an expression of wanting to have control and it's such an illusion that so many of us in my life I thought I had control and I had everything figured out and if I just do this it's all going to be perfect it's never going to be what this wants it to be but if you allow yourself to be with what is instead of trying to analyze label get upset react because this is where emotion starts. Emotion doesn't start here. This is just where you feel it as a result of listening to this, because this is running 24 seven. The more you recognize where it's coming for, from, head or heart, the more you have the opportunity to drop back in and just breathe fully into it all and just embrace whatever it is Sometimes it is best to be silent. Sometimes it is to best to not say anything. The most important intention you could ever have when you walk into the door or the space of, of any circumstance or engage with another person is to just drop in and go, or just, just set an intention that may the words that come out of my mouth be the most loving, supportive, uplifting, in spirit, spirit, inspiration, spirit within. Draw in that which is of your highest divine sacred self, the best part of you that comes from here, the seat of the soul. Allow that to radiate. Really set the intention that that is who and what you are. Because we are not our mind. We are not our personalities and our coping mechanisms and our survival tactics that we have created as a result of the pain that we've experienced in our past and our lives. It was very easy for me as a child to lash out at others or growing up as an adult and say, this person did that to me. And yeah, of course, because I learned those behaviors, those coping mechanisms and survival tactics as a result of my childhood as a result of all that I experience, And that's the only way we do know what we know until we start recognizing that's not who we are. And it's just stories and beliefs that we adapted to, to survive. But now aren't we better to be in a, in a, in a time of thriving, right? So it's really fixating on what is it? What is it that really needs pain, the pain that you feel? What is it that needs attention? 
Because when that darkness surfaces, you have to embrace and love it just as much as you do when you are in your glory and shining bright. Because we are not our shadow. We are not the light. We are. And again, the pendulum swinging from extreme to extreme. We are human beings, but we are souls first. And we came here with the essence of love. We are we are breathed in every single day. It's the one thing we, we can easily lose sight of. Waking up in the morning and just going, <sighs> beautiful. Just breathing in the prana, the life force, this nurturing energy that sustains, maintains. If we don't have that, we have nothing at all, but just the simplicity and being grateful for it, right? Just being simply grateful for what it is in your life that is going right, that you want to have more of, that you want to experience more, as opposed to fixating on maybe that one little thing that puts a thorn in your side. And the more you focus on that thorn, doesn't it hurt more? The more you fixate on the discomfort, it feels more uncomfortable. And so it's tapping into your body's, in, body's wisdom, your the language it speaks, learning and going within and listening, right? And being aware and journaling and reflecting. Because when we are truly emotional and we're stuck up in here, we become I'm irrational. That was a big eye opener for me. And I learned, I've learned this through my teachings and I, I tra my trainings that I've gone through where I've sat with the most crazy emotions and even looked back at my past and gone, whoa, boy, did I act like a fool, irrationally, crazy, certifiable, cray cray on the down, like we don't want that type of cray cray. Like it's embarrassing and I mean embarrassing to the point where I don't even like to look at that, but that's because I have a hypercritical mind and I recognize that's an old way of suppressing and not embracing and accepting that part of me. But when I become fully in my personal power, if I allow myself to come back to, that wasn't a bad aspect. It was just where I was at that moment. I didn't have the tools that I have now. I didn't have the awareness that I have now. And because I have the awareness and the tools now, it gives me more to go within. It allows me that opportunity, right? For growth, for expression of who I was meant to be. And I can keep improving and improving and improving. And maybe I'll have slip ups along the way, but I'm still, I'm still human. And I, I do make mistakes. And I do my best to make up for the mistakes I've made in my life because I already know how hard it is and what it feels like when you're let down and someone makes you feel horrible. I want, I want to heal the world, but I also know if I can't heal myself, I can't heal anybody else. But if I'm out here in front of you all, what good am I if I'm not working on me first? What good am I if I can't hold the, sp the space for you first from my own space of sacredness and awareness? And so if there's anybody out there that I have ever hurt, I am truly sorry from my heart. Ho'opono, Pono. I love you, please forgive me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry Please forgive me, I love you. For me, I'm still learning how to communicate. And sometimes my communication doesn't come across the way I intend it to be. And sometimes I do sound harsher than I am in my heart. And I've softened a lot over the years. For anybody who's ever known me, I guarantee you've seen change. You maybe don't even recognize this person speaking in front of you. I don't from that person I was or the person I was yesterday. 
And I come here to remind myself that life is about being present in the moment. And that this moment is all that counts. Because we don't know if we have the next moment. And so I want my heart to soar and radiate out happiness and joy. And not to be stuck in the other extremes that make me feel uncomfortable or make others feel uncomfortable. I'm here to serve. I always have been. It's just a matter of whether or not the right people receive it and appreciate it. Even if I touch one person's life, one person, I've done my work and then some. So, thank you for tuning in. And if this resonates with you, please share. Please share it out to groups and pages and friends and family and whoever you feel may also need a good meditation. This is a meditation for emotional balance. It's called Sunya Antar. And before we even begin, before we even begin, this is especially good for all of us who may be going through emotional times right now because I know I've been feeling it. Since yesterday, I was feeling it bubble up. And it's mostly, it's been happening for a while, but you know what? If emotions are coming to surface, that means that it's something that's ready to be healed and released, to be reintegrated, to bring all those parts and make them whole, to be one again with your soul. To bring all those parts of you to make you whole, to bring you back as one in your soul. And so, the first thing I would really highly suggest is make sure you have a glass of water and drink it. If you have, we'll say in eight ounces to, will be sufficient. I am super thirsty because I'm de dehydrated. Um, yeah. And so, drink, cheers. Satnam Waheguru. safe space where you can make yourself comfortable. I highly recommend that you find yourself in a comfortable seated position. Bring yourself into awareness. Start to close your eyes down. You're going to chant an Adi Mantra. It's Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. And it's a uh, is basically a way to connect to your highest self. It's the vibration is more important than anything because you're connecting to all the gurus before you, all your ancestors, all these amazing souls, this oneness. Basically, I consider it like beaming up stars. That's the best way you could tune it in, in your mind. Whatever resonates with you, you don't even have to do it out loud. You can do it silently. It's what feels comfortable for you. So what you want to do is start out with the glass of water before we even begin. And I'll tell again anybody who comes in after we tune in. The chant is on one full breath and it's Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. I bow to the inner guru within myself, the inner teacher that connects to all before me. Right? Because we are part of a collective, right? And so, I may be wiggling around while we start this out. Coming into your easy seated position before we even start, I want you to just close your eyes down and just start breathing long and deep into your belly, into your pelvic floor. And just starting to sense and be, become aware of where the breath enters your body and how it dissipates and disseminates throughout all the cells, organs within yourself. Right. Make sure 
that you are tuned in fully to your breath. You're really focusing. Single-minded focus is meditation, and you can use just the breath simply to meditate on. And so breathe long and deep, and just feel into your body and notice any sensations you may feel. Inhale, rise. Exhale, rise. Relaxing the jaw, keeping the ears over the shoulders, the shoulders over the hips. You're elongating through the spine, through the crown of the head. You're, it's like someone's pulling a string up through the crown of your head. You're rolling the shoulders up and back, letting the shoulder blades squeeze nicely and rolling down opening up that heart center, that heart space within you, right? Making yourself available in this moment for you. This is your time. Breathing fully into every cell. Being mindful and watching the thoughts, but listening to the body as you feel fully. Your chin is parallel to the floor. Bring your hands to heart center and prayer pose. We're going to start out chanting the Adi Mantra. On each inhale, you're going to inhale fully, and then on the exhale is when we will chant the full mantra. It's going to, I'm going to go through once so you can hear me, and then we'll chant together three to five times, okay? So just breathing in. Here's my demo. Inhale. Om. Chant the Adi Mantra together three to five times. Inhale. Om.
hands down on the knees in Jan Mudra for just a moment and just sit here with the vibration, the current, the energy, and just go with that. And notice if you see any shifts in your body, your mind. And so just a couple things on this particular meditation. It's for emotional balance. So first, drink, drink a glass of water for anybody who's just joined. You're going to, this is an interesting stance, and it may feel, I mean, may feel comfortable or may not. I mean, stuff comes up. This is for to balance the emotions. And we need to balance the hemispheres of the brain. So sometimes when we do things that cross this neutrality point, this neutral, we cross the, the hemispheres of the brain. So you're going to place the arms across the chest and lock the hands under the armpits. Okay, y'all seen Saturday Night Live, right? With Molly, where she does this thing here. And then she goes like this. Okay, it's not the same, but just think of it that way. The palms are open and against the body. You're going to raise the shoulders up tightly against the earlobe as much as possible, but you're not, you're going to do this without cramping the neck, neck muscles. Then you're going to apply neck lock. Well, neck lock is tucking the throat, the neck back, and you're going to feel just a little pressure in here, okay? The breath is just going to normal, it, it's going to be a normal breath, it's automatic. You're just going to breathe naturally. Your eyes are going to be closed. There's no particular eye focus. If you want an eye drishti, as we call it, you can close your eyes and pretend you're looking up here at the third eye. We're going to do this for 11 minutes, okay? And so, this is actually very good um, and essential for if you're, going through times of worry, anxiety, fear, you're feeling emotional. It's really about the body balance and the key is really tuning into how, how hydrated we are because when we're 70% water, emotions, water, right, the moon, this is all interconnected, okay? So maybe we're not drinking enough water but we're also not regulating the breath. And so if you haven't your had your glass of water, make sure you have your glass of water. Shake out anything that needs to be, you know, moved around. A lot of times we do a suki grind just to warm up and loosen up the spine. Right. But what you're going to do is sitting straight up, hips aligned, right, elongating through the spine. Ears are over the shoulders, shoulders are over the hips. You're going to place the hands underneath the armpits. And you bring the shoulders up as if they're coming up to your shoulder blades, or to your ear lobes. <laughs> and you're just going to breathe long and deeper. Whatever comes for you is your breath, okay? And observe your thoughts. I'm going to be sitting here like this with you all, so you can come back at any time. If you can't do the full 11 minutes, it's okay. Basically, this is going to hopefully get your breath down to four breaths per minute or less. But the idea is to relax into it fully, okay? And I say relax, I mean it mostly in the mind, right? Mm. When we try to force things, it's because we're trying to force from the mind. The, the true power is within your heart, right? We all have an innate power. 
And whenever you have found yourself failing at something, you should always look at it and go, is it because I was in my heart or because I was in my head? The head will dictate trying to force and control. And forcing and controlling inevitably always fails. But when you're in the right space, your heart space, that's your power place, that's your innate power, that always succeeds. It's a natural unfolding. It's the way we're supposed to flow. So bringing the hands under the armpits. You're going to bring the shoulders up to the earlobes, but relaxing the jaw and the neck. And you have a slight neck rock, which means your head will come back just slightly. And you'll feel a pressure in the throat. Okay? So, and begin just breathing, closing the eyes down. Focus with the drishti, the third eye point.
thumb is touching and just sit with this. Just sit. Simply noticing and notice if the emotions have shifted. Notice any sensations in your body. Pay attention to your will and mindful of your breath. And so, that was Sunya and Tara meditation, a meditation for emotional balance, as taught by Yogi Bhajan, Kundalini Yoga. When we're not breathing fully, deep within the recesses of all of our being, what we're doing is cutting off our life force, our, our, our breath. We're cutting off the life supply that, that nourishes us. It is what allows us to to live and we don't even have to think about it but most of the time is when we do pay attention to our breath that in itself brings awareness to is it a short and shallow breath is it really like labored it's hard to breathe i know for myself i've suffered with anxiety and depression and i have gone to the depths of despair and even when i get excited and happy overly excited I have a hard time containing myself and I catch myself holding my breath, right? And so when I catch myself in those moments, I know now to take a moment and just recalibrate, to reset, to bring it back to the breath, to open my breath up fully, to expand into all of my being. Because that in itself is just being present in the moment because my excitement is normally going to be of something anticipatory something in the future whereas my fear is the anxiety of the past and that's what bubbles up for me when I catch myself stuck holding my breath and maybe someone out there may relate to this I when I get anxious and I'm like I can't get a breath I sometimes, I even get nervous if someone's looking at me and I'm trying to catch a breath. I, I almost feel like if you're looking at me, I can't breathe. Sometimes. It happens. I've become better at it with practice over the years. But I am aware of little quirky things like that. And it's because of observing and sitting with and recognizing and being mindful of my mind and my thoughts and tapping into my body's wisdom and learning its own my own language and what is exhibited for me but the more mindful and present i am the more i'm mindful and present i can be for others and so even if you don't meditate in kundalini gora with you and you're somebody out there that is constantly on the go like i was for many years and constantly in reaction mode reaction for gotta do gotta do gotta do i was a human doing like nobody could do but now i want to just be a human being and flow with my soul and allow it to unfold and to recognize what it is i need to nourish what it is i need to go within and confront and reflect upon to also be more mindful of my thoughts, to be more mindful of my words, my actions and deeds, 
that when we go within, which I found myself, that I find I glean the most insight when I'm sitting on my mat and I have my journal and I am taking my notes. And the more I write, the more it unfolds, the more I can confront and reflect upon something, whatever drops in, whatever I'm trying to understand, right? Perfectionism, for me, has been a huge role player in why I have suffered a lot of my life. I have a perfect idea of how things should be and how they should look. But you know what? When you take leaps of faith and you allow things to be and not, you know, you become with work because it doesn't happen overnight, I'm going to tell you. That when you see something like, oh my gosh, that wasn't the way I wanted it to be. But not to react, but to just become that, that compassionate observer, the witness to what your, your mind is doing, and then see how you respond differently. Because then the first question that pops up for me when I think about it is, is this really that important? Is it going to serve? Or am I going to be happy? Or do I just want control, right? Because that's really what all of that is. And so sometimes we have to invite in things that will be will make us feel uncomfortable because that's the only way we can grow. I mean, really, you don't polish a diamond by letting it sit by itself. It still needs some shine. It still needs some rubbing. And we're all diamonds in the rough, right? And we can glow and we can shine. But we have to be willing to show up and allow the rub too, right? The next someone, time someone rubs you, you might want to thank them. Thank them for being there for you to grow and serve. Because sometimes you don't realize the most uncomfortable situations are the ones that you, you actually have to reach in and Find the humility and go, wow, oh my gosh, I am that too, because we are. What it is we, we resist persists, and that persisting resistance, right, what we don't want, a lot of times there's something within us we don't want to confront. I don't want that to come up, because then if it comes up, I have to sit with it. And so sitting with the discomfort, which has been the most rewarding, but definitely challenging for me, has allowed me to have such a, a deeper insight into my own psyche, my own patterns, beliefs, filtration system going on here, experiences I've had in my life. And I'm grateful for all of it. I wouldn't trade it for the world. And when the emotions pop up and I notice them, Yes, I watch them and I handle them and I deal with them. And sometimes I don't speak about what's going on within myself because I am doing the work and that's okay. I don't need someone else to hear about it. But it does come back to sometimes we do need someone else to just hold us, to hold space. Whatever it is that makes you feel loved, whatever it is that makes you feel valued, but make sure you communicate whatever that is, because sometimes we can, we're not all mind readers. Assuming doesn't get us anywhere. It just takes, you know, an asset of you and me. I know for myself, I, I, I express this all the time, I'll never turn down a hug, because you know what? Unless that hug has other than loving intentions, I will always embrace a hug. Because a hug is so healing not just for yourself, but the other person too. And it's immune boosting, it's heart connecting, it's embracing, right? I'm a very affectionate person, I like touch. I like cuddles and I like kisses, what's wrong with that? But not everybody has the same language. You know, when I see my dad, the first thing I do is I hug my dad. When he comes in the door, sometimes he's like, okay, that's enough. I'm like, wait, I want to hug you longer. 
Because I know when I'm hugging him, I'm, de I'm giving him something in return. 30 seconds or less. I, okay, the longer the better. And so when I was growing up, the way my father showed love was he prepared food. And that is one of my many expressions of how I share and give love too. I express, I like to say that I pour love into everything I do. Even the little details that may not be obvious to anybody else, I'm still doing it with love, right? Because whether it's reciprocated in the same fashion for me is irrelevant. I just know I'm doing it from my heart. Yeah. And that's most important is you have to do the check-in with yourself. Are you doing anything? Anything that you do, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Anything that you do, if it's not coming from a place of love, drop expectations because that's all suffering and that's coming from the head. It should be seamless, effortless grace and ease. Right? And so we just come back to self. self. Everything starts with self. Patience starts with self. And if you're impatient with someone else, that's just a reflection of what's going on within you. And it's not a bad thing. But the mindfulness gives you the opportunity to work on it, to cultivate it, to hone it. I found in my most impatient times, that's when I was upset or impatient with others around me. And so sometimes you have to go within and listen. What is going on? Where did this originate? Am I really impatient because of the other person or did it really start with something else before? If you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, you know, you can change that. It's just a choice, but it's awareness that's key. And if you do wake up on the wrong side of the bed, ask yourself, did you go to bed and count your blessings first? I hope that you all enjoyed this video. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate you showing up. One last tune out. I'm going to sing the Long Time Sunshine song, and then we're going to just do one long step now. So, hands at heart center. You can sing it with me if you know it. I'm going to sing it three times through. The first time is for myself. The first, second time is for all my loved ones closest to me that I know. And those, the third time is for everyone of humanity, everywhere, land, whatever. And the beings that be and the energies. So, as we sing. May the long time sun shine upon you. I'm sorry.
<laughs> I wish you all a blessed evening. You know the drill. Keep it raw, stay raw. Bye bye.